Hey, it's Mad Dog. We're here at the International Tennis Hall of Fame up in Newport, Rhode Island. Having a great day here and we're filming a lot of stuff. So this is the last part of four of the evolution of the racket and some of the changes that we've seen. So the racket I'm holding right now is the Prince Long Body. It's the Graphite Long Body. I think it was the Prince Graphite too. It was used and made popular by our friend Michael Chang. Um, it has an extra inch at the end of the racket or half inch and it was the beginning of the transition of the Long Body or the change from just a regular racket. Nobody had straight away from 27 inches unless it was done specifically for a certain player. Um, it, in and out, we see some of it. We don't see a ton of it. More now we see a half inch or a quarter of an inch added to the end of the racket for length. The idea is that extended reach and a little bit more leverage on our serve. Uh, this racket did really, really well in the marketplace in its day. And it was, again, a game changer because it was the first long body that we had seen. Prince made a whole long line of long bodies. Um, Wilson made some long bodies, had made some long bodies, and a bunch of other brands did as well. But these, this is the real first notable one that came out. From there, we went back in to look at materials. And the biggest change in materials was in the early 90s was titanium. Uh, had figured out how to put some titanium in the racket and let the materials mesh. They made the racket very head heavy, but very, very light. And this was the first or the beginning of the direction of let's see how light we can make the racket. And it was very, very light in the nine ounce range. Uh, Prince even made one that was lighter than that, under eight ounces. And again, we found that maybe too light is not so good, but this racket it did very, very well and changed not only heads, you know, future, but clearly changed the future of the way the game was played and the type of rackets that we purchased. Still a wide body, again, very, very light. From there, we went into how the racket was constructed. Wilson put together the racket in pieces. They have two pieces as well as three pieces where the racket fits in. They came out with Triad, which was a very, very uh, damp racket where you didn't get much feedback. And uh, they put material in here in the throat as well as in this area in the V and throat to make sure that the racket was damp. You didn't get a lot of vibration. Um, we haven't seen too much of that lately, but again, it was a change and it allowed those people with tennis elbow an opportunity to really, really pick up a racket that wasn't giving them any vibration back. Today, our biggest changes we see are in the grommets or the holes. And everybody has different things. Dunlop has a, a situation where the grommet is free floating. Prince has created a big port. Some are square, some are round. Uh, other brands have put in vocal started with the big grommet and this has been going on for probably 10 years and the idea is that the string has a little bit more freedom to move. So here we are today in the 2010-2011 era with rackets that are a little bit heavier than they were, not in the beginning but in the middle of our story. Um, rackets that are thinner beamed as well as thicker beamed, there's not one step to go. There is, um, the rackets are more evenly balanced than they've been in the past. We went through head heavy, we went through head light. And now we've come out to even balance or leaning towards head light. And our head sizes have generally come down from that 110 into the 107 down to like a 98. There are some smaller, the 93s, and there are some bigger, the 110s, but generally we're in that 107 to 98 range. So here we go, and there we go. I hope this was helpful to all of you and that you got a little bit of education. Again, from the International Tennis Hall of Fame, my favorite place on the planet, the Mad Dog.